This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Hello, football fans, and welcome to the Onside Kick. My name is Ricky Widmer, and as always, I'm joined by the Mark Weber. Dub them ease. And Mark, I mean, last week we told the folks, I believe we told the folks we were going to do our mid-season kind of podcast predictions. However, mm-hmm. we're going to take that can, we're going to kick it down the road a little bit. We'll get to it, we'll be there, probably do it next week, because this week we got a few bombshells dropped on us in the world of the NFL. I mean, Vernon Davis is now in Denver, went from 2-6 and six to 0-7. Oh Colin Kaepernick is done in San Francisco. You can pack your bags. He's never going to throw another football there. And then we have the Tennessee Titans changing quarterbacks. But I want to start with this Colin Kaepernick thing. Are we being too harsh by saying that the Colin Kaepernick era is done in San Francisco now? Um, I mean, I think mm, no. Here, here's the thing, Ricky. I think if we were saying the Colin Kaepernick era is done like the Colin Kaepernick career is done maybe we're being a little harsh but there's You're saying no overall yeah like there's no chance of him going to anywhere not this season obviously trade deadline's done mm-hmm. uh but going anywhere next year you know because there are teams that have quarterbacks that didn't work out uh you know there's a place like I don't know maybe Washington that might want to at least try it and see what happens or a backup job somewhere where he can go sit and, you know, hope to be a Blaine Gabbert one day to take the reins from a failed quarterback starter. Uh, but I think the actual, there's no coming back for Colin Kaepernick. He's been dirt balling it and just squandering away opportunities and games for over, not just this season. I mean, he was doing this stuff last season with Harbaugh there, mm-hmm. the guy who made him who he is, essentially, the guy who believed in him. Um and it's just, there's no coming back. I mean, San Francisco fans, they hate everything they've been seeing. They just went to a Super Bowl a few years ago, and now they have this. Like, that's a joke. They're not, there's no coming back for it. And I mean, Kaepernick. you say that San Francisco fans hate what they're seeing. I warned you guys. Mm-hmm. At the beginning of the season, Ricky Whitmer warned you guys that this is what you would see. I was a little bit more critical. I'd said that the Niners would only have one win, but I warned you guys. And how many people just... Right in my face went, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, it kind of looks like I know what I'm talking about because you guys suck. But the way I see it is, I mean, I'm looking at the numbers for Colin Kaepernick. 1,600 yards this year, 6 to 5, touchdown to INT ratio. And Colin Kaepernick has never been a guy that's going to blow you away with that TD to INT numbers. I believe his best was 21 to 8. Last year was a 19 to 10 TD to INT, but he's been a guy that, okay, I'm going to hurt you with my legs and with my arm. And then this year just hasn't been, it hasn't been the explosive Colin Kaepernick mm. that and we're he, used to seeing. And even the simple stuff, like it just, the big thing for me when I watch Colin Kaepernick play uh, this year is just that he can't do the simple things. Mm-hmm. He looked great against the Vikings. You know, the whole team looked great against the Vikings. I think that was more the Vikings looking like shit than the Niners looking great. And after that, it's just been nothing. Like, I, like I, I say the sim- he can't do the simple things, but you'll have a guy wide open and he throws it at the ground. You mm-hmm. know, and it makes no sense. Uh, those are the kind of things that you see from the backup, you know, the backup's backup in the preseason. You don't see that from your starter, the guy you expect to win games, the guy who led you to a Super Bowl. You know, that happened with this team. Uh, I I think essentially, I hate to say it, but you really put Colin Kaepernick in the same boat as, you know, some of these flash-in-the-pan mobile quarterbacks that we see. Uh, And we can go through the list, but I feel like we do it a lot. Um, RG3, of course, is the big one right now. Cam Newton's the only one that seems like he's the only one who hasn't been flash-in-the-pan. But I feel like with Cam Newton, it's because he's not just mobile. Mm -hmm. Like, for example— and I know this is a little bit off of the Colin Kaepernick, but last night when I was watching Monday Night Football, that bomb that I believe it was the bomb he threw to Ted Ginn, mm-hmm. just the way that Cam Newton was able to, he's a mobile guy, but was able to stand in the pocket and use his strength 
to just fling that ball out and get it to Ted Ginn. Mm -hmm. Should have caught the ball, by the way. Should have won my fantasy league. But you don't see that from Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, that's not really... That's not his thing. And I think it's just kind of... It falls into this. We see it with these guys a lot. They look really, really good. The defenses catch up. They see what they can Mm -hmm. do. They learn how to stop it. And then there's nothing left for them to do. And that's essentially what happened with Colin Kaepernick. He had that season where nobody had any tape on him. He surprised everybody, did really, really well. Uh, and then since then, it's been going going downhill. And I think really it just comes down to the same thing it always comes down to. There's only one Russell Wilson and there's only one uh, there's only one Cam Newton. All these other guys don't work. Uh, unless you are the Aaron Rodgers who can run but doesn't. Andrew Luck can even run but doesn't, and he's not really mm-hmm. a mobile. You would never say Andrew Luck's a mobile quarterback. Yeah. But you have Jay Cutler doing it. You have, Even Alex Smith will do it. You know, like all these type of guys who can, but they don't. Uh, they have it in their they, bag of tricks, they have but the it's ability not what they're to all do it. about. And, yeah. yeah, but they're not going to most mm-hmm. of the time. Unless you're one of these guys, the people who run, it just doesn't work. And, you know, I wonder at what point NFL teams are going to stop drafting these guys. Like they used to not draft these guys mm-hmm. uh, because it used to be a time where, you know, you have a mobile quarterback and he looks great in college and the everybody in the NFL goes, no, we're, we're fine. We're not going to draft him. Why would we draft this guy? It's not going to work. Now there's been these flash in the pans where it does work and then it fails. So we still keep seeing these guys get drafted. I wonder if they're going to stop again because it's not working. Cam Newton's the only guy who works uh, and Russell Wilson works, too. Russell Wilson has an well, amazing Wilson, team around he's him. He's only struggling this year because of, you know, he doesn't have Max Unger as his center anymore. Mm-hmm. And that offensive line takes a hit. And, of course, Jimmy Graham's not going to block for you. No, yeah, that's exactly what he doesn't want to do. Uh, and, and, you know, and the thing about like a guy like Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson, yes, he can beat you with his legs. But the thing that Russell Wilson does is the exact same thing Aaron Rodgers does. And why Aaron Rodgers is such a great quarterback is because he makes – more time the pocket breaks he doesn't go run like Colin Kaepernick mm-hmm. does and like a lot of these guys done RG3 EJ Manuel these type of he's guys he's running in the backfield looking downfield yeah. for that receiver and that's even telling him hey hey come back come back I'm gonna hit that's you. one of the biggest things in that Vikings game that Colin Kaepernick did so well is he kept his eyes up you know downfield mm-hmm. and he extended the play then passed and that's not what he does Usually that was a that was a rare occasion in that in that situation. So it doesn't I don't know. I just think the whole Colin Kaepernick thing is the same thing that we see with Geno Smith, with EJ Manuel, with Team Tebow, with you know RG three. Every single one of these guys, and I'm sure there's going to be more quarterbacks mm-hmm. in the future, uh, and we could keep going backwards if we wanted. But it just besides a few seasons, besides a few games, it really just doesn't work. And you know. Let's go back. Let's go. I mean, you can have a guy <laughs> or, you know, really handcuff these guys. Say, okay, this is fine, but we're going to train you. Like, we're going to mm-hmm. make you into this pocket-ish quarterback, you know, because it's just not working. Kind of like how, and I think of Cam Newton, because Cam Newton wasn't a pocket guy no. when he came out of college. But the thing with Cam Newton was he had the body strength. So it's like, yeah. okay, he's a guy that can kind of run, but, hey, we got to teach him how to Stay in the pocket first. Mm-hmm. Look at Andrew Luck. I mean, from the Monday night game against Carolina, of course Andrew Luck's up. I would categorize him as a pocket guy. Oh, for sure. But when the Panthers weren't getting to him, and when they did get to him, he ran it for a couple mm-hmm. yards, was able to scramble out and get some yards. So, I mean, if you can be a mobile quarterback like Cam Newton, like what Andrew Luck can do, Who's not? Then uh, sure. We know. Don't yell at us. We know Andrew Luck's not a mobile quarterback. No, I'm just saying when the yeah. pass rush got to him, he was able to use his legs to yeah. extend the play. He's not going to run first for sure. I just with me, I really feel like there is no turning back mm-hmm. from this decision. And if you're sitting there going, well, well you benched him for Blaine Gabbert. There well, is I mean, no turning back look from at, that. That's look as at bad what you as he did gets. With, this is exactly what you did to Alex Smith. Mm-hmm. And what did you do to well, Alex Smith? Well, except for one you of your teams him. was winning. Alex Smith's yeah. team was winning. No, I know that. But, I mean, you did this to Alex Smith, and you ended up trading him. And yeah. the reason why they did this— I don't think going to trade Colin Kaepernick. Ki- Who's well, going to take him? That, for I, what? That's the only way you're getting rid of him if you trade him. Because right, right now he's in year two of a deal that 
he's expected to not be an unrestricted free agent until 2021. Yeah. You know, people complained about Jay Cutler's deal, but this Colin Kaepernick deal is looking pretty Six bad. Six year, $114 million, a $12.3 mm-hmm. million, $12. million signing bonus. Hey, you know what? Maybe Colin Kaepernick will do really well like Jay Cutler's doing really well this year. You know, maybe next year is the year. Maybe they'll fire. Maybe they'll fire. Who's it out there? Tom Sula. Tom Sula. Yeah, maybe they'll fire him. They'll get a a really good veteran coach in there. Ken Wisenhunt. Ken yeah, Wisenhunt's gonna go. come over. You get Ken Wisen- He's been to a Super Bowl. You can do that. It or all makes Joe sense. Joe Philbin. Joe Philbin can come to uh, San Fran. He's won a Super Bowl. <laughs> so the ba- so the it doesn't really equate there. Joe Philbin has mm-hmm. been there for a victory. Um, but yeah, it's just. I don't know. For me, Colin Kaepernick, it's done. Blaine Gabbert's coming in there. They're gonna draft a quarterback. I mean, they're they're in contention with the, with the Detroit Lions mm-hmm. to to get that number one pick overall and to draft a quarterback. Well, and the reason why this happened, in case actually you're they sitting don't need there, to get the first pick overall, they can just draft a quarterback. They're not gonna draft. The Lions aren't drafting a quarterback. They got Matt true. Stafford. Why I mean, they the Lions one? are probably gonna go with if the Lions get the number one pick. We are probably going to see. An offensive tackle go number one, unless they want to go defense, but mm-hmm. that's with the Lions. The one thing, though, with the 49ers is, and I was going to say really quickly before I go on to this next point, the reason why this benching happened is the last three or the last two games, three points against the Seahawks, six points against the Rams. Divisional opponents where you needed wins, and you put a, up a combined nine points yeah. and field goals. So Kaepernick didn't even get into the end zone. Mm-hmm. But the one thing I was going to say to kind of how you said Lions aren't drafting a quarterback, the Niners can. Who do you go with? At this point, I mean, Cardell Jones has been eh. No, I mean, yeah, he's no. Seth Russell probably ain't coming out now well, with I mean, his Car- vertebrae injury. I mean, Cardell Jones is getting, he got benched too. Mm-hmm. Well, he got benched. Now he's going to play this yeah. week because of what happened with JT. Barry. But do you really feel confident Christian in a guy who in has college been, got benched? You know no, what I mean? I, and that's why I don't think this year there's an answer at quarterback in the top five. No. Like, before that, the all. year, before the season started, we had all these guys like, oh, man, Cardell Jones, Christian Hackenberg, uh, yeah. Connor Cook. Now I'm looking and going, yeah, I can maybe get Paxton Lynch, the guy from Memphis, who mm-hmm. people are saying, if you're sitting there and you're an NFL guy and you haven't watched college football, the way people are describing Paxton Lynch from Memphis is think Joe Flacco – with athleticism, mm-hmm. that's Paxton Lynch, and I mean, which even then you're not super thrilled about. Yeah, I'm you're not you'll take super it. thrilled about that. For right now, Blaine Gabbert's your guy, though. If you're Sam Fran, let's think about this for a second. Let's go into the future before we move on to another thing. So Blaine Gabbert is the quarterback right now. Okay, he's probably going to finish this season unless he gets mm-hmm. injured. Um, what's next? Let's assume you're not going to draft somebody. Who's your free agent that you look for? Or your guy you trade for in the in the offseason. I mean, there's, of course, going to be Jimmy Garoppolo out of New England. I, backup don't, think, quarterback. I don't think the Patriots they don't want to trade go. him. Yeah. Because Tom Brady's not playing 10 years. Maybe, I don't care what he says. You know, I don't know. He says he's going to play 10 years. <laughs> uh, maybe you could try and just straight up trade Colin Kaepernick for RG3. Uh, I mean, it's, you obviously can't straight trade them. But you could try and get something worked out. How about I'm going to throw two names out there. The first one, Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford. Does Chip Kelly get fired? Well, Sam Bradford is going to be. I'm looking at unrestricted free agents for 2016 mm-hmm. on SpotRack.com. Sam Bradford. I mean, I don't think. And I mean, based on the season, if the Eagles don't make the playoffs, maybe Sam Bradford doesn't get re-signed because then that trade is kind of like a. Well, hey, you know what? It didn't hurt us. We can just let him go. Yeah, it was just a one-year trial. The other name, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Before I get into that Fitz Magic business, um, with with Bradford, the thing for me with Bradford is yes, it was kind of a trial period, and that's the way this whole thing was set up. Mm-hmm. But I think with as bad as the season has gone, Chip Kelly. I mean, he didn't marry himself to Sam Bradford. It's not like he drafted the guy or anything else like that. But you traded a good quarterback for him. Uh, you were saying you wanted him. I just think like if. If you're Chip Kelly, you have to re-sign Sam Bradford. If you don't, you're admitting you made a mistake. You're the guy who was just given all personnel control, and you made a mistake right off the bat. You made multiple mistakes, actually, while we're looking at it in hindsight. But things did not work out. 
Uh, that's you know that's a little not here or there, but I think that's the thing. That's why I don't think Sam Bradford's really an option in this case. I think if Chip Kelly's there, Chip Kelly brings him back. See, and the reason, even if it's cheap, the reason why I bring up those two names mm-hmm. is there are other names that are starting right now, but most of the names that are in this free agency category are backups. Matt McGloin, you have Kirk Cousins, Chase, our Case Keenum, Jimmy Clausen. Joe Webb, TJ Yates, Chad Henney, Bruce Gred- mm-hmm. Gredkowski, Dan Orlowski, Whedon, Castle, Schaub, Vic, Luke McCown, Matt Hasselbeck. Yeah. These are guys where those aren't guys where I'm saying, yeah, I want to give him the keys to the kingdom. Mm-hmm. King, The keys to the castle. When it mm-hmm. comes to Fitzpatrick, um, the thing about Fitzpatrick, he's the starting quarterback of the Jets. He's do the not Jets a get rid of him or do the Jets draft a young guy? I mean, if the Jets are going to draft a young guy, I mean, the 49ers the, might as well. Because the only one, bad you know? thing about Fitz Magic is that he's 32 right now. Yeah. He's and, 32. And it depends on how much of a stopgap you really you really want. Um, I mean, I, I don't think he's – if the 49ers really – I don't know. If the 49ers think like, hey, we're not going to draft a quarterback, we're going to get the pieces first, mm-hmm. maybe they do want a guy like, like Fitz, uh, Fitzpatrick out there. But like you say, he's 32. He's the starting quarterback. I don't really. Th- he's done really well. You know, so far. You know, well, I mean, he's really not interesting. There now, but he was Re- doing really well. You know, it'd be really interesting, huh? Peyton Manning comes back for one last year. I don't know why he would, but let's say he does. Brock the cock says, "Okay, I'm done in Denver." He signs in San mm-hmm. Fran. Yeah, that's another one of those just kind of hoping. For, I mean, that's a, what's that's a gonna, Ryan Mallet type. Because what's going to happen with Brock the cock? Mm. Even if Peyton Manning leaves, is he the heir apparent? I think he has to. Or be. do they let him walk? You know that to me, that just screams Ryan Mallett, though, of like the guy who didn't get a shot mm-hmm. but was behind a good enough quarterback. So we assume he's got to be good, right? Mm-hmm. He's sitting behind a great quarterback. Uh, and what happened with Ryan Mallett? He's available. He's available right now. He got cut. True. Go I grab him if you want. That. He's out there. Yeah, I think the the biggest thing that I would look for for one of these teams, whether it's you know the the Redskins or the 49ers, uh, maybe even the New York Jets, is what's up with Johnny Football? Do the Browns want him? I mean, he's a backup quarterback. Is he content being a backup quarterback? Because he was not, you know, the Johnny Manziel of a year the ago way, was not content being a backup. The way I see Johnny Football is it's kind of a similar situation between RG3 and Jay Gruden, but there's not a microscope or a spotlight put on that situation where I believe Mike Pettin will never have Johnny Football as his starter. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to happen. So in that case, do they, you know, does he ask for a trade? Does he want to go somewhere? Do they just or, trade I him mean, on their own? I mentioned an insider article on ESPN to you before we hit the record button. Some are saying Mike Pettin's seat is hot. Does ownership say, hey, we drafted this guy. What are we going to do with him? If you ain't going to play yeah, him, let's, let's find sell someone some who will. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I just think that probably the most interesting name for just the rumors and all the conversation will, you, I think, be Johnny are, Manziel. Were you getting to? Were you going to get to the point too that maybe do we see a Kaepernick for Manziel trade? We could. I mean, especially sometimes you do always have the change of scenery that mm-hmm. is what's important. Because to me, I feel like with Kaepernick, the only way you're going to get him out of San Fran is if you trade him. They're not going to cut him with his contract uh-huh. and how big it is. They're not going to cut him. Yeah. Now, that is a lot for a team like the Browns to take on. That's a big contract when you're getting rid of. Now, however, Johnny Menzel is a fairly okay contract. He was a first mm-hmm. round pick, not the old Sam Bradford day first round pick. Uh, but he was a first round pick, so he did get a decent amount of money. Nothing huge, nothing too substantial. So it's doable. I think it's a fairly even trade for just, you know, to say, hey, let's see what we can do. Neither one of these teams really cares about these guys, I think, right now. I, I don't know. I It's unfortunate. Um, I mean, I used to say it when, in the offseason when everyone was talking, as, I'm, as a Chicago Bears fan, when everyone's talking about Jay Cutler, and I was saying the Bears have to keep Jay Cutler because what, what are they going to get in the offseason? What are they going to get in the draft? And unfortunately, and unfortunately for a Bears fan, it's Jay Cutler looks okay right now. But unfortunately for teams like the 49ers, for teams like the Redskins, you know, these teams that don't have quarterbacks, you're sitting there right now going, 
great, we're going to go into a pool of bad quarterbacks and pick the least bad Mm -hmm. and and see what we can do and just hope it works out. Uh, Because you don't have the luxury of sitting Brock Osweiler behind Peyton Manning and hoping it works out in three years. Well, and I mean, of course, most of these quarterbacks were not Aaron Rodgers type homegrown, but you see Phillip Rivers, homegrown, Tom Brady, homegrown. Matt Ryan, homegrown in Atlanta. Joe Flacco, homegrown in Baltimore. Eli, homegrown in New York. Stafford, homegrown in Detroit. And like I said, like Matthew Stafford was number one overall pick. Mm -hmm. So unless he was going to be Ryan Leaf, you expect him to be the guy coming out. The names that I skipped over, like Carson Palmer, Drew Brees, guys that have changed scenery. An interesting team that I feel like would be a good scenery for Colin Kaepernick that we will never see, the Philadelphia Eagles. Like, as soon as the 49ers said that they were benching Colin Kaepernick, I thought back to a video I saw from a YouTuber. His name for short is EDP445, huge Eagle fan. And he had a video that was just titled, Colin Kaepernick to the Eagles? Question mark. Mm. And he was talking about how, as an Eagles fan, don't want it, don't want that trash here. Yeah. But the way I see it is everyone talks about Chip Kelly's offense. You need that mobile quarterback. Sam Bradford's not as mobile as we – he's not that mobile. No we'll one just leave it there. to be mobile, yeah. Colin Kaepernick can be that mobile guy. Yeah, but the, thing, the problem for that is Colin Kaepernick doesn't have arm. He doesn't have an arm – he doesn't have any arm there. He doesn't have any arm strength. It's mm-hmm. just not going to happen. I mean, it's it's not going to work out. We see him throwing dirt balls to wide open receivers. Like I said, it's not going to work out. I'm going to say it right now. If if I'm an Eagles fan, I'm already yelling that Chip Kelly needs to be fired. But if I'm an Eagles fan and you trade Sam Bradford, the guy you traded Nick Foles for, for Colin Kaepernick, I'm done. I'm burning the jerseys. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm saying nope. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys. If I got season tickets, I'm burning those too. You're picking a new team? You're yeah, picking I'm, a new I'm team to root claw for? up at that point. <laughs> you know what? Not even that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to become a Cowboys fan. That's how mad I am. If I'm a if I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan and they go get Colin Kaepernick, I'm like, nope, I'm cheering, I'm cheering for the boys or the G-men, not the Washington mm-hmm. Redskins. I still won't do that. <laughs> but I'm going to cheer for one of those you two. You mean the Washington Redskin potatoes? Yeah, the Redskin potatoes out there. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's, I don't know. I mean, that, I'm still not... I'm still waiting for for all of Chip Kelly's genius mm-hmm. moves in the offseason to make sense. It hasn't happened yet. Before we're we, eight weeks in, it hasn't happened yet. Before we move on to the Vernon Davis trade, because we are we have been talking about Colin Kaepernick for a while, I'm going to throw out one more trade off season wise uh-huh. that maybe we see Colin Kaepernick in only because there was some speculation about this quarterback being moved. Do we see a Colin Kaepernick for Drew Brees trade because I know every like there were experts that were like oh well there's a chance Drew Brees could get moved then this past week he throws for seven touchdowns it's yeah. like really you gonna trade Drew Brees however in the off season it's a different story because you don't have a game like last week to kind of shade you from trading do we even see Drew Brees move from New Orleans Ricky here's the thing uh, you asked me if I think that. Somehow, in some world, Colin Kaepernick <laughs> for Drew Brees will happen. And Ricky, just stop it. Just stop it. It's not. It's no, not even worth it. Not going to happen. It's not even worth talking about. Not a chance. Not, not even worth talking about that Super Bowl winning quarterback Drew Brees, all time great in New Orleans, is going to somehow get traded for Dirtball Kaepernick. Is that what we're calling him now, Dirtball Kaepernick? He throws it at the ground. You're open. Here's your feet. Have fun. Can your feet catch? My my feet cannot. Well, depends. Am I the cornerback from, I want to say it was San Diego State that caught that interception in college with his feet? Then maybe. Maybe. But w- let's move on. One guy that luckily got his ass out of San Fran mm-hmm. and went from 2-6 and six to 7-0 and o overnight. We have Vernon Davis is now officially a... A, I almost said a New York Jet. He's a Denver Bronco. Mm. And here's the And fir- what a difference from Colin Kaepernick well, to Peyton Manning. Not just that. I was watching First Take today in the afternoon, not when it was live in the morning. And I kind of agree 
with Stephen A. Smith on this trade. Do the Denver Broncos need Vernon Davis to be the Vernon Davis that he was a few years ago? No. Do they need him to be Rob Gronkowski? No. All they need Vernon Davis to be is Julius Thomas from last year. That's all they need. Mm -hmm. That's well, all I, they need. You know, the thing about this is really it's Peyton Manning that's throwing you the ball. I mean, I know we talk about Peyton Manning not being the same Peyton Manning he's been in the but past. But he's not dirtball Manning. No, exactly. He He's going to make you look great. He really will. And Vernon Davis is a great player. So he's going to look extremely great. Uh, it, it's This is just the rich getting richer. I'm essentially, they're doing exactly what we asked. Are they going to do last mm -hmm. week? We asked, is Gary Kubiak saying it is right now? This is the year we will win the Super Bowl or bust, essentially. And I got to I gotta get props to Gary Kubiak. I've been very, very down on Gary Kubiak throughout the whole season and the offseason. Uh, he's really done a lot of great things there, and he's really gotten Peyton Manning to fully buy in to his system. It's working out. He's masking all of Peyton Manning's flaws from his old age. And that defense is amazing. I, I keep I keep joking about it that Aqib Talib has won every game of this season, but literally Aqib Talib wins every game out there. I don't. Does he have all the game balls? Because he probably should. <laughs> this team is doing, and I, I owe a little bit of respect to to Gary Kubiak for that. Um, with that being said, I mean this you know, rich getting richer. You don't need it. It's well, great to have, was, and if anything, it's better that you just didn't let him go somewhere else. Well, this was the one position that the Broncos needed. This was it. Because, I mean, you let Julie. I'm not going to say let, but you let Julius Thomas walk in the offseason, go to Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. and, and what's Julius Thomas big, doing now? Eh, we're not going to talk about Julius Thomas right now, but the big thing with Thomas was how do you replace that? Oh, when Daniels come in, everyone's like, oh, well, he knows Kubiak. And it hasn't really worked out. Owen Daniels hasn't been the tight end that everyone expected him to be. And why would you? He's kind of an old guy. Well, now you get Vernon Davis. And the lucky thing is you didn't have to give up the farm, to use a baseball term, to get him. The Niners send Davis and a sixth for this year's sixth over to Denver, and Denver sent them a 6th and 7th round. Or they sent, the, the Broncos sent two 6th rounders, 16 and 17. Niners send the 6th for this year in Davis. Mm -hmm. So virtually you get rid of Davis, you swap 6th rounders, and you get another 6th rounder in 2017. Yeah. Win-win. Oh, or, for sure. Win-win. For sure. Uh, and, you know, the 49ers, are, I think, are admitting, I mean, six-round picks aren't that great, but they're admitting that, hey, we got to we gotta start over. One fib. It was not a sixth. It was a seventh from the Niners. So you move up mm -hmm. this year, even better. Yeah. You're moving up. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they know they got to they know they gotta rebuild that team. Uh, where the Broncos are on the other side, they're saying, we don't care about the future. We want a Super Bowl. We want it now. Mm -hmm. uh, this is They know this is the last well, year. The last year for Manning. Yeah, this they know it's it. done. After I this, mean, it's going to be completely different in Denver. What I think is going to happen with Peyton Manning is if he doesn't win a Super Bowl this year, he'll come back and it'll be like Brett Favre. When Brett Favre didn't win a Super Bowl with the Vikings and came back for that year where Brian Urlacher standed, was standing over him, uh -huh. and we saw that in the Chicago Sun-Times, yeah. all, my, all my friends at the time kind of took that page and like, taped it to my car, or put it on my window. Yeah, that's what I got taunted with. Just Brian Urlacher standing over Brett Favre as me as a Vikings fan. Do I think Vernon Davis is going to be like the, boom, okay, they're Super Bowl winners now? No, I got to see how he plays. However... I if he comes out this weekend or next weekend and starts playing some good football, I may just say, okay, Broncos, they're my favorite to win. Next week, if Vernon Davis plays well before next week's podcast, the Broncos may be my rep the team that represents the uh -huh. AFC in the Super Bowl for me. There's only three teams in my mind right now that can beat the Denver Broncos. Only three. Three? Yep. Two I would in, say only two. One in the AFC, two in the NFC. Really, I would go. Yep. I would go the opposite. But who do you think? 
I the only teams that I think obviously the Patriots can do it. Yeah. The two NFC teams are the Cardinals and they are the uh the Panthers. The Panthers defense will line up extremely well against this Broncos offense. And then it's a ground and pound. Mm-hmm. That's what it becomes. Because I think those two, I mean, the secondaries and the corners are going to cancel each other out. And I'm going to give a little bit more credit to Keekly out there to stop any run game from happening. What an interception from him on Monday night. Too. Almost two. I mean, he well, almost he got should, the other one in the end zone. He should have. Like To me, and I said this uh-huh. in our NFL Power Rankings video, to me that last interception was kind of the football god saying, hey, you should have got that one in the end zone. Here you go. Say, Sorry about that. Here you go. Sorry about that, Luke. But to me, the only I agree with you with the Patriots. I mm-hmm. agree with you with the Panthers. The team that I was switching, because I said two AFC teams, the Bengals. I feel as of right now, the Bengals and the Patriots – both have – am I saying for sure winners? No. Maybe the Patriots, yes. But with the Bengals, I feel like the Bengals as of right now could give the Broncos a run for their money. Mm-hmm. The Panthers is – the only thing that worries me about the Panthers is their defense. If their defense gets tired. Yeah. However, a great AFC championship game will be Pey- – if we, if we get Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Broncos, Patriots – that's going to be the best AFC championship mm-hmm. this year. Yeah, I mean, in that case, he's got to win it. Although, with that being said, now, okay, let's just say that happens. For Let's play this game here. <laughs> this will be the legacy maker for Peyton Manning. Mm-hmm. It'll be either he went out and he beat Tom Brady, the greatest of all time, arguably, greatest of all time quarterback, went out, beat him, and then won the Super Bowl. Or... Peyton Manning can never get it done in the well, offseason, and he lost once again. I was, I was going to Tom say, Brady. If it happens and he does meet Peyton, mm-hmm. if he does meet Tom Brady in the playoffs, he has to beat Tom Brady and then win the Super Bowl. He can't do what happened in the NBA in the '90s with Reggie Miller. Uh huh. He can't like for the entire career. In case you guys are like, well, Ricky, what are you talking about? For Reggie Miller's entire career, it was. Him against the Knicks. Him against the Knicks. Can he get over the Knicks? Can he beat the Knicks? Well, when he finally beat the Knicks in the playoffs, it was the semifinals lost in the conference finals. Well, Peyton Manning can't Reggie Miller it. He's got to beat Tom Brady, then win the Super Bowl. Oh, for sure. Or else it doesn't count. For sure. But, I mean, that's gonna be a, that would be a legacy maker right there. Mm-hmm. Now, I will— I'll, Could you imagine if he beat Tom Brady, then got a rematch with Aaron Rodgers and the Patriots? And just and kill ju- him. And just like John Elway— Beat the Packers. Mm-hmm. Beat the Packers for that Super Bowl. That would be nice. That would be nice. I will say one thing, though. I don't think Peyton Manning comes back. I think even if he loses, I don't think he comes back. No, I think he's done. I think he, yeah, I think he'll be done. I I, I wouldn't be surprised if towards, oh, actually, I don't know. Peyton Manning's not really a showy guy. I don't think he would do this. But I wouldn't be surprised if we had a beginning of the postseason, him just saying, you know what, I'm done after this. This is it. No, I don't think he does that. I don't think he would either because I don't think he's going to want to draw the attention to himself. But it wouldn't be surprising he'll if wait he till, knew he'll that He'll wait till after the season's over. But here's an interesting – this is a random thought that just came to my head. If you are Peyton Manning, do you retire a Bronco? Or after you say, okay, I'm retiring, do you do the one-day contract thing and re- retire as a Colt? I think it comes down to a couple of things. Does what he, would you do if you were Peyton Manning? If would you I retire want, a Bronco? Yeah, if I want a Super Bowl. would you retire a Colt? If I want a Super Bowl in Denver, I'm going to retire a Bronco. Okay. I'm going to retire right then and there. I'm going to retire with the Lombardi in my hand, and I'm going to say that's it. Does folks. it really matter what team you retire with? To him, it probably it might. It might. Because I know him and the Colts kind of had a falling out. Yeah. A bad falling out. Now, I think the thing that makes... Me less likely if I'm Peyton Manning to go and retire as a Colt is the fact that Andrew Luck is there. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they have. Well, it's not. It, you're not playing any games. It's you do the one oh, yeah, day contract exactly. and you retire. You do, but I mean, just still, so you can get the name next they, to your. The guy who replaced you is the guy that they unceremoniously was like, "Get the fuck off our team." For Andrew Luck is right there. You know, I I think that's a little that's a little weird. You know. Brett Favre wasn't going to do that. 
he wasn't going to come back and sit next to Aaron Rodgers on the roster for a day and just so he could retire. Well, it's during the offseason. You're not sitting next to anybody. Metaphorically sitting next <laughs> to him on the roster, not the bench, Richard. But I mean, uh, I, I, believe, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. And I believe that even at the Colts stadium, mm-hmm. they have roped off in an area, a, mm-hmm. a locker that still says Manning. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's really that much bad blood. There or anything like that. I just think it doesn't. It wouldn't surprise me if he did it, but I I don't I don't really see it. I don't know. I really don't. I think Andrew Luck is there. They've moved on. Mm-hmm. They're gonna retire his number, you know, and all that. So it's not like it makes a big difference. They'll have a big ceremony for him probably you know next season, just to celebrate his existence. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't think it matters. Now, Gary Kubiak, we need to say this, though. Okay. Gary Kubiak, if they if they win a Super Bowl, how lucky is Gary Kubiak? I mean, he's getting Joe, or he's getting John Gruden status right here of, hey, <laughs> I've developed this team. I put them together for you. Now you go win a Super Bowl with them. Now, he did a little bit more than, than John Gruden did. But it, he just walks into the perfect situation, goes ahead, Gets himself a Super Bowl ring and like is set for life. Joe Philbin style. He's set for life for a little bit until they realize, oh, you're not that good. You well, just looked good because you had a great team and a great quarterback. I, the whole thing that I kind of, after 2013, I always felt sorry for Kubiak. Because I feel like when he was with the Texans, he I felt like he was not a, I'm not going to say a legendary head coach, but he was good. He wasn't chopped liver. He wasn't Joe Philbin. He wasn't a Ken Wisenhunt with the Titans. He's not a Chip Kelly. But he always played, like, the Texans to me, the biggest thing that was always hard was you had, they're an expansion team. So when they start out, it's like, okay, you are you don't have, like, it takes you a while to build up. Uh-huh. And they got to the playoffs under him. Yeah, they did. They got to the playoffs under sure. him. But I just, I feel like with the Broncos, this is him saying, see what I could do if I had a team. Well, he's saying, see what I can do with Peyton Manning. Well, that too. The, like, third greatest quarterback. Well, not just that. He's got a great defense there, too. Yeah, a keep to leave. Great, great deal. Well, he's <laughs> it's not just to leave, Mark. It's a keep to leave. He wins every they game. They also have Von Miller. He I wins all every o- game on you his can't own. Can't overlook Von Miller. Well, I think here's the thing with Gary. Uh, I'm gonna call him Gary affectionately. Uh, he always had that great defense. Now the things that looked really good for him in Texas, uh, well in Houston, there's multiple teams in Texas. Is JJ Watt was amazing. Arian Foster. He kind of lucked into those guys. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, you can give him credit for scouting and stuff like that, but yeah. he kind of lucked into these really freak athletes. He was working with Matt Schaub all that time. It's incredible what you can do when you have a great quarterback. Especially as Schaub went on and he became pick six Schaub. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the th- the problem with Gary Kubiak was always how conservative mm-hmm. he was. It didn't work out for him uh, once that defense started to age a little bit. I just think Gary Kubiak, to me, is a perfectly above-average coach who's never going to be great. He's never going to be all that good, but he's going to, you know, he's going to win you some games. If you get the right situation put together, yeah, you can have a Harbaugh in Baltimore that goes and wins a Super Bowl with this kind of all right team, nothing special. Mm-hmm. But overall, he's inheriting a great team and he's inheriting a great team. I mean, he's got to be. Well, he's inheriting a great team that John Elway put together. Yes. And I hope for his sake, I really hope for his sake that, you know, he's there and he at least acknowledges the fact you know, he humbles himself a little bit and goes, man, am I lucky yeah. for this. Well, he is. And, I mean, the way the Broncos, the one thing we didn't even mention is the Broncos tried to make another move at the trade deadline and weren't able to. They tried to acquire Joe Thomas from the Browns but couldn't get it done. Mm-hmm. Well, because, you know, once a, once a Brown, always a Brown. <laughs> you know, you can't get that stink off of you. So, I mean, that would be great. You know, there's so many teams that could use a guy like Joe Thomas. Um, you know, and he's going to stay a Brown for life. He doesn't want to go anywhere. He wants to. I don't think it was he wanted he to not go anywhere. He wants to solidify anywhere. that sadness out there. He wants to be the only thing on that entire team that's worthwhile. I don't really. think that Joe Thomas wanted to stay. Hey, he chose to stay. Sadness. He chose to stay there a few, I think it was two years ago when he resigned. 
He wanted to stay sad. Yeah. He had the option to but, go anywhere. But I feel like uh I feel like when someone gives you a choice, hey, you're going to be uh traded. And I know I'm reading an article right now, I looked into it. He did say he didn't want to be traded. I don't get why you like now my idea totally changed. Cleveland that. born and raised. Why do you not want to leave Cleveland he for loves a Super Cleveland. Bowl? He loves Cleveland. Yeah, you know who else who loves Cleveland? LeBron. And how many championships does LeBron have in Cleveland? That's right, zero. A whopping zero. Because Cleveland is supposed to be sad. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Cleveland. It's your role in the sports world. You're not supposed to be happy like us in Chicago. Ever. And that's a Bulls reference there. Ever. That's or not a Bears reference. Pretty much any of our teams. Our teams win Super Bowls, too. <laughs> we won one. How many do the Browns have? None, unless you're the Baltimore Ravens. Which I in that case, you I have I believe one. Chicago well, has a championship one. in every single yeah. major sport. Yeah. Got one in baseball. Mm hmm Got one in football. We got a couple in basketball, mm -hmm. and then hockey. We got yep. a couple. That baseball one. No thanks to the Cubs this year. Hey, hey, we'll get them next year. We'll get them next year. But yeah, yeah. how many times are you gonna say that? I believe it this time. I believe it. But the last thing we'll talk about today on the podcast is Ken Wisenhunt. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw this on ESPN. They're like Ken Wisenhunt fired, and just to show how much either like I didn't care about this or just how like. Low it is on the pecking order, and just go, huh? Yeah, <laughs> it, it was like kind a of a, this sack. makes sense. It was just like a, huh? Oh, that happened. Yeah, I mean, I I saw it too. I saw it on ESPN at first. And I was like, yep, that makes sense. I mean, I don't get why they did it mid season. I mean, rookie quarterback. Mm -hmm. Did you really expect to do anything great this season? If you're I mean, the just got just got to pull that band aid off. I guess at this point is what they're thinking. What the weird thing is, is you're still a playoff team. Mm, yeah, but they're not, they they know they're not a playoff team. With, with how bad the AFC South has been They know far, they're not a playoff team. They are still a playoff team, Mark. I mean, Andrew Luck did single-handedly bring his team back in the game and then single-handedly lose the game for his team, all within like a span of five minutes. You still but have five. Like, they're I'm not sorry, going to the, four, the playoffs. You still have four games against your division, too. They're not going to the playoffs. I don't know, man. I'm not saying they they're are for sure, six. but they're mathematically still. The Colts only have three Ricky, wins. Ricky, let's remember the season starts for this is what happens when two seasons start football and baseball. What happens automatically? The Browns and the Cubs automatically eliminated from the playoffs. Mathematically <laughs> impossible right when the season starts. It's what happens. It's okay. The Jaguars this fall into, or the so Titans in this case fall into, the Jaguars too, but the Titans fall into this same but situation. This, this division is so bad. Andrew Luck will win a game or two. Will he? He ha I mean will he almost did it before he decided, you know, wait, that's right. I want to fuck this up as honestly, much as possible. You know what I am honestly hoping for from the AFC South? Hmm. I am honestly hoping that we get a six and ten division winner. Yeah, that'd be impressive. I am ho like I am. Just rooting for that. Mm -hmm. he, it, once I heard one of the experts on TV mention that that could happen, I'm like, fuck it. Let's go for it. Yeah. Let's try to get a 6-10 and 10 team into the playoffs. And, like, Ken Wisdom, I just, I got, like, I'm like, oh, okay, it could happen. But the more I think about it, it's like. Did it really need to happen now? And let's also, if we're going to get a 6-10 team. Did we really think that that job wasn't going to open up at the end of the year? Well, if we're going to get a 6-10 and 10 team, I want to mention this. Let's at least let it be the Titans. I mean, not the Titans. I mean, the Texans. Let's at least let it be oh, the Texans. I know, right? Could you let's, imagine let's have them Bill O'Brien get, get in? Bill O'Brien, <laughs> who also is on the hot seat, uh, at least should be. But yeah, I think this is just, I just honestly think it'd be funny because everyone expected Andrew Luck and the Colts to be amazing. And then the Texans mm -hmm. get in. Um but yeah, it's just I don't know. I mean, the the Ken Wizen Hunt thing is. I guess I get it. Pull the bandaid off. Say, you know what? Fine, we're done. We and have Ken, zero intention of and keeping. If Ken Wizen Hunt gets fired, then Jim Caldwell has to be next, right? Jim Caldwell, Chip Kelly. You know, all these guys pretty much got to go. I I know I only mentioned two, but all of them got to go. Tom Sula. Can we? Do we really care about Tom Sula right now? Can you just start over? In that case, I'm trying. I'm looking at all the last place teams. The one last place to well two last place teams and divisions that I see their coaches not getting fired. Lovey just because I don't think Tampa Bay has the guts to do it. But the one that won't get fired, Harbaugh. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, Harbaugh never goes anywhere. Harbaugh won't. But I mean, no. he's had, he's built I mean, good stuff. The last place coaches, Mike McCoy, kind of his seat's Should warming go. up. Jason Garrett. I mean that that Jason Chargers Garrett team pro- is disappointment upon Jason disappointment. Jason Garrett probably won't get fired, but. Probably should. Caldwell should. Tom Sula should. Yeah, it's 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 rough. I mean, the only the only thing I'll say within all of that is that with Jason Garrett, he does have the benefit of the doubt of not having his star. They did let the star uh, running back leave. You mean he has an excuse? Yeah, they had Tony Romo get hurt. You know, Des Bryant got hurt. They had mm-hmm. all that. Now they're stuck with Whedon and Matt Castle. Which is horrible. Neither one of those things work out. Remember a couple, like two weeks ago, when we were like, hey, maybe that cast could be a real deal? Uh, hey, and, man, I thought, no. he, I thought he'd do better than he did. Mm, I no. thought he would do better than he did. But unless there's anything you want to say, Mark, I think we should just get to our uh, our secret picks um, for the week. All right, that sounds good. That sounds unless good. Unless there's anything you want to bring up about the Wiz and Hunt firing to me, I feel like there's... Not a lot to say because I'm just like I said. My reaction was just, huh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's pretty pretty accurate. I mean, right now, I don't even know who they even think about to replace him. They probably just don't. <laughs> They're probably like, you know what, forget it, it's fine. They, like they, Mario to go have fun. Out they there. get the chud from uh, Indianapolis. They, they say, coach, chud, you can come coach over here. Coach trade. <laughs> they trade coaches. The chud. You know, maybe. I don't even really know who like the hot assistants are going to be for next year, so I don't know who they're going to shoot for for the off season. Adam Geis? No. Are we still, are we still talking about Adam Geis being a possible I, I think head he, coaching candidate? The Bears are like they've only won two games. I think we gotta we gotta relax on that a mm-hmm. little bit. I think it, it, wait until they actually have a winning season before his phone starts ringing. Um, plus, I don't know if he wants to go anywhere just yet. I think he wants to wait and develop that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh but with that being said, him and him in San Diego would be kind of nice. Uh, I think that would work out well. What him coming back to San Diego? Yeah. Well, I think him in. in I know Phil, he was in Denver. He was in Denver. Was in but Denver. I mean division coming back yeah. to the division. Uh, but he him and Philip Rivers, I think, would be a cool combination. But with that being said, um, I really think that there's going to be one more coaching firing called well. during the season. I think it should be called well. Mm-hmm. Um. But I'm honestly surprised they haven't done it yet. Because what are they waiting for at this point? Unless they just know, hey, our team sucks and there's nothing you can do. But in that case, that's exactly what the <laughs> Titans just did. They said the team is bad. We have no intention to keep in this guy. Let's just get it done with. Let's just – it's that breakup. Sometimes you just got to do it. Mm-hmm. Send her that text. And then why did Caldwell? Why did Caldwell ever leave? He left the Ravens. I hope that they text Ravens or Colts to go to what <laughs> when they fired. Yeah, they're like, you know what? Hunt. Sorry, Ken, it's not working. But you know out. what, Ken? It's not you. It's me. It's yeah. not you. It's us. It's, it's us. us. It's the team. Yeah, we're bad. It's not you. You're great. You're great, it's man. Us. You're great. You went to a Super Bowl. All right, we have not been to the <laughs> Super Bowl a really long time. Ninety nine. Yep. They, really were, they, were, they were this close, like a like an inch close to winning that Super Bowl. Tyson just reaching. Didn't get it, but I got, I got your secret pick. You ready? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bears Chargers. Duh, Bears. I knew it. That's why I gave it to you. Always the Bears. The Bears <laughs> are going to win. Uh, Jer- you know what? Jeremy Langford's going like, to make up for the fact that he dropped that ball. Uh, Monday, oh, I, I am really looking forward to what we see out of Langford in, like, Forte's absence, but I mean, mm. look at that Monday night game. I'm like, really, we're getting. Can we flex schedule that game out of it and get like Packers Panthers or like maybe Broncos Colts or I mean Eagles Cowboys is Sunday night. That's fine, but can we get a better matchup than a couple of two win teams? Nah, it's gonna be great stuff. What's your secret pick for me, Mark? I'm going to give you. A real quality matchup because you know I like giving you quality matchups. All right, I'm gonna give you the Jacksonville Jaguars and the New York Jets. J E T S. If I could spell J E T S. Jets, Jets, Jets. That's how it goes. Yes, sure. New, New York J gets it back on the map. Jaguars are done. Zero and three on the road. The Jets do not lose to another team like they did the Raiders. They should have won last week, but nope. They didn't live up to. I find it. I, I want to mention that, by the way. Mm-hmm. We had a comment by, I believe our commenter's name was Dakota. 
came up with a prediction for that game, said 27-20. Got a reply from another viewer from our uh, preview video who's like, no way the Raiders score four touchdowns on that defense. Dakota, this is a shout-out to you for being right on those four touchdowns. Don't let anyone talk down to you because you know your stuff. But, yeah, I'm going with the Jets in this one. No way the Jaguars beat them. But that's going to do it for the onside kick. You can follow me and Mark on Twitter. Mark's at the with two E's. Mark Weber. I'm at Ricky Widmer. Most Valuable Podcast is at Most Valuable Pod. If you're on SoundCloud, hit that repost, that follow button. If you're on YouTube, like and subscribe. Thank you guys for checking out this video. Let us know in the comment section what you think of anything we talked about today with Colin Kaepernick, Vernon Davis, Ken Wisenhunt, and maybe even we, we threw them Peyton Manning in Denver in there, so you can mention that too. Thank you guys for checking out this podcast, and as always, have a good day, everybody. Thank you for listening to this MVP podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Most Valuable Pod for more great podcasts.